Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and we have the GE Orion on the workbench again. And in this video, we're going to talk about building yourself a programming cable. There are several different programming cable options, and the one we're going to talk about today is the one that I've decided to use because it doesn't need a level converter. And this basically is the one that we discussed earlier that goes between the DB37 at the back of the radio and then you plug your control head cable into it and then this end plugs to your personal computer and there's no need for an interface in this particular cable now this cable is not inexpensive I paid uh, about fifty dollars for it and all it is is just a DB37 uh, male to female straight through with the programming pins within the connector accessed in series and with the ready to send and clear to send tied together this is our down and dirty DIY programming cable right here which we're not going to have the female tank to the back of the male connector and so you can hook the control head cable to it because it's really not necessary all you need to do is supply power your ground from your power supply to pin 1 and then your power supply positive to pin number 25 which is also tied to pin 8 of the DB37 connector and what this does is this provides power to the logic board of the radio which lights it up in order to facilitate programming so essentially on your DB9 you're just going to take your clear to send and ready to send connections and tie those two together with a solder bridge and then you're going to take your receive data line which is pin 2 on your DB9 and you're going to bring it to pin 3 of the DB37 then you're going to take pin 3 which is your transmit data line and bring it to pin 2 of the DB37 then you're going to take pin 20 and pin 6 of the DB37 and bring those two together this is another way of expressing the connections made between the two connectors the DB9 female and the DB37 male than what was in the previous whiteboard. On your DB9 on the left, you have your transmit data, receive data, ground, and your art ready to send and clear to send. And those two are tied together. The ground on pin 5 of your DB9 is going to go to pin 7 of your DB37. Your receive data is going to, on the DB9, pin 2, is going to go to pin 3 on the DB37, which is transmit data. And on pin 3 of your DB9, is going to go to pin 2 of receive data and then on your DB37 pin 1 is going to go to the negative side of the 12 volt power supply pins 6 and 20 your clear to send and ready to send are tied together and then pins 8 and 25 are tied together and they're fed with the 12 volt positive side of your power supply start by removing your jacket with your razor blade to access the conductors And you can see we got a lot more conductors than we need. So do this at either end of your cable and fan your conductors out as so. Nice thing about having this surplus of conductors to make this cable is, is this is basically our toolbox right here in our hardware store. So what we're going to need is, is we're going to need these red and the black wires to power our radio. So what you can do is, is just merely pull your conductors, the red and the black wires out, and we'll use these to build our power connector for the DB37 to power our programming interface here, or our programming cable rather. And then we're going to need another conductor to utilize too, and we'll use the black and the white one, and we'll use that as our jumper wire to make the jumper connections on our DB37. Go ahead and strip your cable ends at both ends of your cable and just expose enough to make connection. About that much is about as much as you want to take off of there. The shield and the additional conductor are superfluous at this point so you can go ahead and just trim those back to get those out of the way. 
flux and ten your conductors on your cable. After doing that, line up all of your conductors evenly and taking a pair of precision cutters, cut your ends to uniform length for the DB9. You'll want to bridge pins 7 and 8, so take a small amount of flux and make yourself a solder bridge. Green is ground on pin 5. this up inside of here and we're going to use a small wire tie to secure the cable. And that's going to keep this cable from moving around too much. Okay, you can see our card here in our DB9. We've got our data connections made and if we were using a standard DB37 mail, all we would do is, is following the same soldering we did for the DB9, we would just apply that towards the DB37. And this, your ground wire would go to pin number 7. And then your white wire would go to pin number 3. And your blue wire to pin number 2. Now we'll go ahead and make our jumpers out of this wire that we pulled out of the multi-conductor cable that we used. And it's quite a run in this particular connector here but this first jumper we're going to go from the CTS pin to the RTS pin and show, short those two together so we're going to go from pin number six to pin number 20 with this cable here you can see that we have our RTS and CTS jumper together now now we're going to go from pin 25 to pin number eight with the same kind of arrangement Except when we get to pin number 8, what we're going to do is, is we're actually going to tie in a power lead to that one. So now what I've done is I've taken my red battery positive lead and twisted it with my battery negative lead. Because nothing says cool like twisted pair. And run those back out through this uh, reinforcement that I have for the body of the cable itself and I've taken my jumper that goes from pin number 25 to pin number 8 and I've tied that together with my battery positive wire and that's going to go to pin 8 here. Now we'll take our battery negative wire and run it to pin 1. Well, here's our homemade programming cable. You have this lead here, which you basically would hook to your power supply. And I just tend these wires here so I can use test clips to provide power to the control board of the radio to facilitate programming. We have our DB9 here. Our DB9 goes to the PC. And our DB37 here that plugs into the back of the radio with our jumpers and our connections to the DB9 to the computer. Well let's see if our project works. We've got our computer hooked up. We've got our DB9 connected to the back of the computer. You can see we've got our DB37 connected and we have power provided to the DB37 through these test jumpers right here that's hooked to my bench top power supply. And we've got a winner. And here is our template. And there we have it. Okay, so we've made some changes to our template here, and we're going to go ahead and write back to the radio.
and we should be good to go. Okay, let's reboot our radio and see if our changes took. And let's see, yes they did. Test five four three two one one two three four five. Test five four three two one one two three four five. Well, there you have it, the do-it-yourself GE Orion programming cable. Apparently, this will also work on the uh, Jaguar 725 and the 7100s, but I don't have those radios, so there was no way to test it. The important thing to remember is, is to make sure that you power cycle the board between read and write cycles. So once it completes a cycle and it's successfully completed, go ahead and disconnect your power from the radio. And then when you go to write the radio, Reconnect your power. Sally forth and save the radios. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.